So, uh, number six here. Um, looking at the, and this is something that you might want to start doing every time you see one of these, is think about the three components, the three parts that you're able to uh, make an argument about. One of them being that one. The other one being that one. And the other one being that one. Okay, so if we look at those, okay, those are, and that, that's the case every single time. It's when we have a right triangle and the green, or the, the yellow segment is an altitude drawn from the right angle to the hypotenuse, you're going to get those three segments. Okay, those three segments are always the geometric mean. Okay, um, so we just look at them. So, okay, which one can, can I deal with the the green one? No. no, I don't. I don't have a value there, right? There, there's no um, information there. Is there any information for the yellow one? No. No. Okay. So I'm going to look at the blue one because there's information there. Okay, and that is going to be a geometric mean. So x plus six goes here, and x plus six goes here. Just a second. Um, so that that is the geometric mean between the hypotenuse. Now, what would be the hypotenuse? for uh, this shape. Yeah, it's that entire thing there, 13 plus x. Okay, so 13 plus x goes here, and now what should go here? x should go there. Okay, so we're looking at, remember that is the portion of the hypotenuse that's touching the leg that we use. We use that blue leg. So now we cross multiply it. It's going to, initially, it's going to look kind of ugly when we cross multiply. But if we look here, there's an x squared, right? You're going to show up. And we look here, there's going to be another x squared to show up, right? So you think, oh, I'm, I'm going to have to factor. But because they're on both sides of the equal sign, they actually cancel each other out, which is nice. So I'm going to get 13x plus x squared equals then this becomes x squared plus 12x plus 36. Okay, that's product of those two. What happens, like I said, with the x squareds? Cancel out. So now I'll subtract 12x from both sides. x becomes 36. Okay. How can I check myself? Well, if x is 36, come back in here. Obviously, this is going to be, what, 42? Yeah. This here is going to be 36. Can I go and look at, okay, if x was 36, this would be 36 here. Okay, 13 plus 36 is, what, 49? So 49 would go there. X plus 6 would be 42 times 42. And all I've got to do then is check proportions. Now, I don't think I would simplify here. Uh, you could if you want to. But I'm going to see if 49 times 36 is the same thing as 42 times 42. And because they are, I know I've got the right x value, okay? Um, at least the right x value for the original proportion I set up, okay? Is that doable? Obviously, you know, this is a nice one that says note the figure. It's not always going to say this, but they do that because you just found 36, that distance there, and it doesn't look much bigger than 13, right? Okay, but... Uh, because they're saying it's not the scale. Obviously, we want to we want to view everything everything we come across as being not the scale, um, unless told otherwise. So that was six. All right. So again, um, we're looking at three segments. We're looking at a leg. Let me get my colors up here. We got a leg. We've got the interior altitude, and then we've got our other leg, right? Which one of those has got information attached to it? The altitude, the interior altitude, right? And that's so that's the geometric mean. These these colored parts are the only things that are ever going to go here and there. Okay. So now I focus on that green segment, and that's the interior one. So the interior one is the geometric mean between that distance there and 
that distance there, right? So I put x here and 4 there. Cross multiply, so it's going to give you x squared plus then, okay, so it's going to be 2x plus then 1 is equal to 4x, right? Okay, so here then we've got to uh, subtract x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0, right? Okay, now I have to factor. What two numbers will multiply together and give me 1, but add up to give me negative 2? Uh, negative 1 is negative 2. Eh? Eh? Think about how do they, they got to multiply together and give me 1. So negative 1 is one of them, and negative 1 is the other one. Negative 1 times negative 1 gives me positive 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 gives me negative 2, right? So here it gives me x to be... This, one, this is going to give me x equals 1. That is also going to give me x equals 1, which we refer to in, in algebra. We call that a double root. Okay, um, Not a big deal for us right now, but that, that makes that 2, and that makes that 1, right? Just real quick before uh, we finish this, we want to plug things in. That would be 2 there. That would be 2 there. That would be 1 there. Is 1 half the same thing as 2 fourths? Yeah. Yes. So x is indeed 1. All right. Looking at this one, um, in regards to the things that we have, there's no there's no requirements or I guess expressions for that. There's no expressions for that one, uh, but there are or there is an expression for the green one, right? So then I ask myself, what is that green one? Is that a leg or is it an altitude? A leg. It's a leg. And, and really, there's not there's not there's not a wrong answer to that, okay? Because they're both it, it's a leg and it's an altitude, right? Um, but based off our corollary that we said yesterday, that we wrote down yesterday, we, we generally refer to it as a leg, then knowing in the background that it also has the altitude um, characteristic. But it is a leg, so legs go there and there in our proportion. Okay? It's the geometric mean. Now, and I think these are the harder ones, it's the geometric mean between that whole thing, which would be what? 52. And now, just the portion that's touching the green. So the portion that's touching the green would just be that, right? Get those crayons in there for you, Tyler. So X has got to go there, right? So now when I cross multiply, I'm going to get 52X is equal to X squared plus 26X plus 169. Okay. Is that all right? So now, I'm going to subtract 52x from both sides. All right, now, just the way this one's set up, it's, it's kind of nice because uh, if I look at 169, I look at that right away and I instantly know that that's a perfect square, right? So I see 169, but I also see 13 times 13 there, okay? And when I see 13 times 13, that's nice because what's 13 plus 13? 26. 26, okay? Now, they both have to be what in this case? Negative. So x minus 13, x minus 13. So then x is 13 two times, right? So now, now we can put 13 here, okay? Uh, we can say that this would be 26. Uh, what would this blue distance here be that I just erased? How do I find that? Yeah, 52 minus 13, so what's that, 39? Okay. Now that you have it, now this question doesn't ask this, but could you find that distance right there? Yeah, because I could say now y here, y there, right? And put 39 and 13 in those spots. So y squared would be oh, 13 times 39, and y would be the square root of that, whatever that is. Mr. Kenny's getting after it over there. I think so. Oh, that was, yeah, you're right. That was Mr. Place. Before it was Mr. Kenny. Um, does that kind of make sense to you guys? Uh, you can. Once you start finding values, you can start, especially the way this one's set up, they could ask you to find uh, maybe that distance there. 
They could ask you eventually to find that distance. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. All right, so again, and this is, this is where today's questions are uh, kind of more aligned with, if I look at that segment, that segment, and that one, I can deal with the green one, right? The green one is a leg, so let's go there, correct? Now, what should I put here? Okay. And then what should go here? Good. Okay. So I'm going to get y squared. Now, 12 times 8, that's 96, right? I'm not going to do that because I don't want to simplify 96. But I'm going to look at 12 times 8 that way. And then y should be the square root of those things, right? So that's going to be the same thing as square root of 12 times square root of 8. So I think it's easier to, to simplify two radicals that are 12 and 8 than it is to simplify 96. Okay? What is a perfect square that will divide 12? 4. Okay? So 12 breaks down to radical 4 times radical 3, right? What's a perfect square that divides 8? 4. So it breaks down to that, correct? What's the square root of 4? 2. So square root of that 4 is 2. What's the square root of this 4 is 2 again, right? And then radical 3 and radical 2 are not perfect squares, so they stay that way. So now it's 4. Radical, anybody know what radical 3 times radical 2 is? Radical 6. Okay. So what that tells me, guys, so that's the way I did it. But if you did it this way, if you go 96, okay, uh, obviously we know 96 because of the numbers that we use to multiply together to get it, we know 96 goes to 12 and 8, right? 12 goes to 2 and 6. 6 goes to 2 and 3. 8 goes to 2 and 4. 4 goes to 2 and 2, right? Is that a pair of 2s? Yeah. It can come out as a 2. Because that's because this is all these are all multiplied together, right? Yeah. Understand when I do the the reason I do this factor tree is because I'm looking for all the factors that are prime that can multiply together to get 96. So two times two times two times two times two. Okay, so those five twos, and then I've got a three, right? If I were to take my calculator and type that out. Two, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Can I write that as 2 to the 5th? Yeah. So 2 to the 5th, that's 32. Then times 3 gives me my 96. Does that make sense? Okay. So the reason we're doing that is because this is all underneath the radical. So that's all underneath the radical, right? Well, if I look at this, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. What is, what is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? 16. So this is really square root of 16 times square root of 2 times square root of 3. Does that make sense? Yeah. Square root of 16, though, is 4. Square root of 2 and square root of 3. Okay. Get them all plotted back together. Give me 6. There's a lot of different ways we can view and do the algebra, but we're trying the, the all the, all the algorithms or procedures, step by step things that we're doing, they all uh, address the. Uh, the concept of trying to divide out the largest perfect square that will divide 96 even, so they get an integer portion. Okay? Um, so 96 divided by 16, 16 is the biggest perfect square that will do that, um, and it really is the remainder of 6. Okay? So get radical 16 times radical 6, and that radical 16 changes to a 4. There's a lot of different ways to view it, okay? And I'm going to continue to show, maybe for the next week or so, radical work and how different ways you can see it, okay? Um, but there's going to be a point where, you know, if you say, I don't know how to deal with radicals, that's on you. Okay? I've shown you the resources. I've shown you the places to go. You've been through Algebra 1, okay? Um, they are things that we need to understand so that we can address the rest of this course. Uh... So that's, that's funny why, 
Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing then for x, right? So x is the interior altitude. So where should it go, top or bottom? Bottom, bottom where should it go over here? Top. top. Okay, so we're looking at that one there. Where? What should go here? Eight, and what should go here? Four. Four. So now I get x squared is equal to? Okay, that's fine. Take square root. You get root 32, right? Yeah. What perfect square will divide 32? 16, right? So we can rewrite this as 16 times 2. Radical 16 times radical 2, right? So what's radical 16 the same as? 4. Yeah. You can do it this way. You can go 32. Goes to 2 and 16. That goes to 2 and 8. That goes to 2 and 4. That goes to 2 and 2. Okay? And we can group them up and say, okay, there's a pair of 2s. So it can come out front. There's a pair of 2s. It can come out front. There's a 2 that doesn't have a pair. So it stays underneath. What's 2 times 2? 4. 4 right there. Okay? And this process, this prime factorization process, is developing for you... Those perfect squares, we being able to group them up and see, okay, 32 divided by 4. It also divides by 4 again, okay? So it divides ultimately by 16, right? Okay? Um, that, that algorithm, we call that an algorithm, we'll, we'll do that prime factorization. Just trying to see, you know, what the factors are of those values and stop when we get prime numbers. Does that help? Yeah. All right. Uh, and you wanted to do... You wanted to do the, or I wanted to do, I guess, the next one. Yeah. This is another thing you got to pay attention to. They're not always going to directly give you all the components in the way that you hope they give them to you. They're going to make you do a little bit of work for them, right? Okay. So let's look at... The individual part. So we got that part there. We've got that part there. And that leg right there, right? Let's look at the purple one. Can I use the purple one? Do they have an expression for the purple one? No. Yeah, so that's an expression. So we got y. Now, if I'm focusing on that purple one, that's a leg, right? So then the legs, then you compare to. The entire hypotenuse. What's the entire hypotenuse? 56. 56. Okay. Now the part of the hypotenuse that's touching the purple leg, which would be that there, right? Yeah. What is that? Uh, which would be? 28. 28. Okay. So now this, this is, guys, this is where I, I think it's useful. Now, Initially, I'm, I'm going to use my calculator just in hopes that this product of 56 times 28 is a perfect square. So I'm going to multiply them together, and I'm going to take the square root of that number. Oh. So 1568, and it's not a perfect square, right? Does that make sense? So I'm not, I'm not going to come to the side and do 1568. And start dividing that by 2, right? Okay. Uh, because, let me just show you real quick. Okay, so it, does, it doesn't really take all that long. But you see here... All the factors of 2 that you would get and the 7s that you would get, right? Okay. So factoring that thing is not extremely convenient because it's a pretty large composite number. So what I'm going to do is I think that it's easier to take square root of 56 times 28, which we now know is the square root of 56 times the square root of 28. And now wouldn't it be easier to think about the perfect square is divide 56? And then think about the, the perfect squares that divide 28. What perfect square will divide 28? Uh, 4, right? 
Okay. It only it has to be less than 14, doesn't it? It has to be less than that number or half that number. All right. So then it gives me four and nine being the only ones I could choose, right? Four is the only one that does that. So this turns in to two radical seven. Okay. Because, you know, I kind of skipped a step. We're going to write it as four and seven like that, right? But square root of four is two. Okay. How can you check yourself with this stuff? If I've got two radical seven, make sure it's the same thing as radical 28. Square the number outside. What would that give you? Four. Multiply it by the number on the inside. So that gets you back to 28. Okay. 56. Okay. Now i got to look at numbers that are less than 28 that might divide 56. What numbers divide 56? What perfect square might divide it? Nine. Nine and six. Okay, so nine and six. Okay. Close. All right, so 50, 56. What's half 56? 28. Okay, so okay, so think about this. If if half of 56 is 28 and 4 divided 28, shouldn't 4 divide 56? Yeah. Okay, so let's write that. So 4 and 14, right? Would that be 56? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So it gives me 2 radical 14. And this is 2 radical 7. Now here's the only issue with something like this. This radical 14 and this radical 7, they need to go together, right? Yeah. Okay, well, think about this. 2, now radical 14 is 2 times 7, right? Times then this 2 times radical 7. Do you guys remember how to multiply radicals? No. Okay, the number that's on the outside gets multiplied by the number on the outside. Yeah. So that would give me 4, right? The numbers on the inside get multiplied by the numbers on the inside. Correct? Yeah. Now I'm going to do a little bit of work here that I'm going to take the 2, just leave it as 2. But now what's 7 times 7? 49. Well, can't I rewrite that 49 as that? What's square root of 49? 7. So I can come out as 7 times 4, right? Yep. What's 7 times 4? 28. 28. So 28 radical 2 is the same thing as the square root of 1568 okay i think that's easier to do because i'm not having to take my calculator and use 1568 and hit divide by two divide by two divide by two okay um you can and, and, and you'll end up with all the twos that you need you'll get like two to the fifth and seven to the third okay is that okay there way you you can Pair up so the, the group is a two, the pair is a two, the pair is a seven. Um, that's that value for uh, y there. Okay. Um, the x value okay, so now we're looking at this thing here, right? It is the geometric mean between what two things? At 28, right? And that distance there, which is also 28. Be intelligent about this, guys. X times X would be X squared, right? 28 times 28 would be 28 squared. Square root both sides. It goes away. Gives me X. Those cancel out because they're inverses, and it gives me 28, okay? You'd be amazed on how many people will take 28 times 28, so write 28 times 28, they'll write that number down, and they'll start dividing by 2. Start doing the factor tree. That's, time, that, that's a waste of your time, right? Okay. Um, what I want you guys to recognize and what you understand, radicals are a very, 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 very important component to this class. Okay. Uh, eventually, we're going to start talking about, you know, back to squares. And we're going to talk about the distance from here to there in a square. 
okay? And that distance is incorporating a radical, okay? Um, you guys are eventually maybe going to take a trigonometry course, okay? Which we're going we're gonna to cover quite a bit of, of that in this uh, class. But this is what my trig students are working on right now, okay? And, and if I just enlarge this for you, see a bunch of radicals up there, don't you? Mm -hmm. And also a bunch of fractions, don't you? Okay. So those things don't go away. If you don't like them, I mean, it's not, it's not something you can just give up, okay, and not worry about them because they become the main things that we use beyond this course. Okay. So please, please, please heed that warning. Um, you've had some exposure to them in other classes. I've exposed you to them in this class, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, you will work with them a lot in algebra two. Um, radicals are important to learn and understand.